All right, so thanks everybody for coming today. Uh, this is Deb, I'm the fine, uh, founder of FindCalm here, a uh, community that is bringing together people who wanna talk about finding calm in everyday life, in the chaos of life. So today we have music, finding calm with music. So this, uh, I am super passionate about music, although I don't play and I don't sing, you probably don't wanna hear that but <laughs> I love music and I've loved supporting local live music for, gosh, I guess over a decade now, I've been going to open mic nights and just listening to all uh, my favorite musicians locally play. And so I thought, why don't we bring one of them on here and talk about how amazing it is to, and how to, you know, how to really um, utilize music for um, creating calm in a stressful life. Like, times when it's stressed out what kind of music or what how can we talk about that and then all of you guys i'm sure you have um ways that you've brought music into your life and found calm so we want to learn from you as well so i'm gonna i'm gonna toss it over to glenn and he's gonna kind of introduce himself and tell his story a little bit and then we're gonna do some questions and we're gonna do some journaling so everybody has their pen if they can have their pen and hold it up for me everybody have a pen i gotta switch over to the gallery view. All right, so everybody's got a pen and a notebook to write down some, some thoughts, and, uh, and then we're going to start. So I'm going to toss it over to you, Glenn. I'm going to unmute you. I'm muted. Can everybody Great. hear me? Everybody, everybody hear Glenn? Give a thumbs up if you guys can hear Glenn. Okay. Yeah. How about my friend in Maine? There she is. All right. Uh, thanks, Deb. Well, uh, my name is Glenn Smith. I live in the uh, Harrisburg area, specifically Mechanicsburg. I live about uh, three miles from the house I was born in. Uh, so uh, although I, I've done a lot of traveling, I uh, we've stayed home uh, as far as uh, uh, choosing a place of residence. Uh, I currently work for uh, UPS Freight. I'm a supervisor there. Um, I've had various uh, logistics jobs ever since uh, the late 90s, but uh, all through those times, I've always played music professionally. Um, so I, I've always thought of myself as a musician who works uh, at UPS or a musician that, you know, supervises forklift drivers or, you know, whatever it is that uh, I happen to be getting paid for uh, nine to five throughout the week. Um, I started playing music when I took guitar lessons when I was about nine, 10 years old, started playing the classical guitar. And then I put it down for a while. And uh, when I was about 16 or 17, I met a friend who had an electric guitar, uh, Fender Mustang. Uh, he showed me the blues uh, and I was sort of hooked from that point on and uh, had my first uh, professional gig, uh, when first paid gig in 1989 at the Carsonville Hotel. Um, and I've been playing, uh, I've had a, a paying gig every year since. So um, music's a big part of, uh, of my life. I listen to it passionately. I write it. I play it. Um, I go out and love watching uh, bands play. Uh, and soaking up the energy and so it's a huge part of my life uh, also the ability to find uh, calm and uh, quiet the noise has been a big part of my life uh, it's been an essential part of my life I'm in recovery uh, I have a PTSD diagnosis um, so my, uh, it's been necessary for me to find methods and tools uh, to sort of quiet all that stuff in my brain. Um, so, you know, when Deb asked me to do this, it sort of um, was an interesting marriage, so to speak, because, you know, music is one thing, but using music to uh, find calm is a, is a pretty specific thing. And I, she just happened to want to talk to me about that. I thought that was interesting. So um, that's a little bit about me. We can get more into that stuff. But uh, 
when I didn't even know about that either. And it's so funny because I've been friends with you for a while and I just always thought your music was really chill and calming. And whenever I hear you play, I just automatically feel really relaxed. And so that's why I would read. And, and you were, you and I were talking about trying to do some open mic nights and we were, you know, we were chatting and then I was like, Hey, you should do this. This would be an amazing thing because I even had this, Find calm here with music set before I even asked you actually and then I thought I think you know you'd be perfect for this and then I hear all this other stuff when we had that call later that I didn't even really know so it's just like like yeah. the universe is in such alignment right now yeah and it's, it's not like uh it's not like I go around advertising you know the the broken parts uh but you know it just it, it just fits because you know, there, there is a, a lot of people that um, not only struggle with day-to-day -day stress, but they, they struggle with, uh, you know, uh, chemical imbalances in their brain. They struggle with, you know, trauma that they've been through. And all that stuff just causes the wiring in your brain to go a little, little off sometimes. And, you know, finding tools to be able to reset that in a healthy manner is like the key to survival sometimes. And Music is one of the ways uh, that I've been able to to do that. I, I I can't speak for Ryan. Ryan, I've known Ryan for about 20 years, and you know, 22. And yeah. you know, Jesus. I unmuted you so you could talk. <laughs> yeah, we met in '98. Actually, yeah. I was just thinking about that. You used to host. I met you when you were playing music. You were hosting an open mic. Uh, what? I guess it was next downtown Harrisburg by the Harrisburg Midtown Arts Center. Now, uh -huh. I met you and Tony in there when you were part of Tony Perry Three. I used to stop in now and then and do the open yeah. mic. Yep, I remember that. That was definitely '98. Yeah. So I, I mean, Brian can or Ryan can uh, um, back me up on a lot of the stuff that I'm that I'm talking about. I'm sure. So um, it, it's good to have. Uh, good to have him on the on the panel. So, uh, one of the things that, you want me to open it up with the uh, the the question, but Deb wanted me to come up with a, a question to ask you guys, and this is where you you're going to need the pen and the paper, and she just to sort of start the conversation. I want you guys to th sort of think of a time when like you were really calm, and what role did music play in that? Think of, think of a, a time when just everything seemed to be, you know, where it was supposed to be. And what role did music play in that? If you guys could maybe take a second and write that down. When you guys are done, just look up at your screen or give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Is that the uh, universal Zoom symbol, the, the thumbs up? Yeah. Because you have people muted, we have to use hand signals? Yeah. I don't do a lot of Zoom meetings. This is one of my first, so. Well, I love it. I think everybody's got it, right? Everybody's good? Yep. All right. Who wants to go first and share? Hi, mom. <laughs> Is anybody willing to share their experience? All right, Carolyn. Am I unmuted? I'm I unmuted. Got, I got you. Okay, so from the years 2007 through 2016, um, I used to go every year to a reggae fest a weekend long reggae fest in the forest. Um, it, the location changed once, but um, it was in the forest, camping with friends, reggae, you know, reggae is happy and danceable and having that all weekend just kind of in the background of your life for a whole weekend when you're just hanging out with your friends and uh, my boyfriend at the time. So it was just, just 
I always felt an overwhelming sensation of everything is right with my life and the world right now being in this space. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. I Anybody love that, Marilyn. That was awesome to kind of combine music with nature and, and just how like that feeling, like, you know, just that feeling just like really great about alignment and yeah. presence and being aware um, yeah. and mindful. That's such a cool, uh, I think, pre uh, you know, music for one thing helps me be grounded. And I think that like when you're talking, especially about nature, that's, that's like literally you're in the, you're standing on the ground. And everything about that experience brought out the best in everyone that was there and involved. And it was just a one love hippie fest. <laughs> and a sense of community. So also yeah. in that sense of community brings calm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that music is the thing that brings everybody together, which is really amazing. Yeah, I miss it. It um, had its last year. It was the 25th year in 2016. And um, the promoter, the guy who did it, he needed to move on and do different things. And it's just, you feel this, I mean, you move on, but you feel this, I feel it, just a hole where that used to be. And you know, I don't know, music fills my life in so many other places. But um that was such an important piece of my life for so long good memories I, and i think uh, uh i'll talk about this more later but i think memories play a huge part mm -hmm. in uh finding calm in music and i specifically yeah, yeah. Wrote, wrote some of that stuff down does anybody else want to share want to unmute stephanie Okay, cool. I was just nodding along with Carolyn because I've been to a few music festivals as well. And I can kind of understand that feeling of calmness at one point where you just you just take it all in and you're just looking around at all the people that you're with and the music going on in the background. It's just a really nice, like I know what you want, like happiness, like everything is right at the moment. So yeah, definitely echo that. Was there a specific time, like a cer certain event, like you're talking about, like a specific concert you can remember? Um, I've been to a lot. So like, I think at almost like every one of them, like at one of the days, like there's a moment where I feel that, if that makes sense. Where do you go? Where do you, where's your, um, the venue? Um, so the one that comes to mind, <laughs> um, it's not exactly calm music, but it's, um, um edm festival in vegas edc have you okay. heard of it no not actually you know what i have heard of it and you know why because one of my customers when i was at my company that i just left um he uh, is in vegas and he's a huge music fan he goes to like all these big and he's really into like i guess that would is that kind of like techno is that am i totally off Kind of, yeah. Okay, it's, so yeah. he's very much into that, like whole uh, electronic and and um, however you call that and techno and stuff like that. So he would be like sending me this music and uh, in you know Facebook messages and like he would e email me because he he had and then some of it I was like okay, all right, <laughs> not really my jam, but then this is not bad. So yeah, yeah that's very cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Stephanie. Yeah. And Robin, did you have something? Yeah, unmute me. Am I unmuted? Okay, so um, it's funny, just hearing you guys say that, I feel it's more, you know, at these festivals, it is like everyone's there for the music. So that vibe, no matter what kind of music it is, like it just brings this huge, like, like a hug fest, you know? Um, I mean, I've been to a ton of concerts too, you know? Seen Grateful Dead in California, and um, we have a folk festival here in Bangor that I think there's like five, six tents maybe. So you can walk around the festival, and each tent is a different band, it, and it just rotates for three days. It's really fun. Um, we also have um, one of my favorite things is 
we have a conductor's college that's only, you know, people fly in just for summer and it's a six week, you know, classical concerts on um, symphony concerts on Sundays. It's like this open air shed and ah, it's just like everyone's there because they want to be there. And I think that, um, I think that whole group effect really helps quite a bit. And when I'm at home, it really just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I could go anywhere from crazy, hard, loud music to very soft. I like the opera. I just started listening to the opera within the last five years. So I realized if you can get the directions in the beginning, they're much more fun to listen to. <laughs> so I'm all over the board with music. So that's what I think. I think it's the, the people kind of you know make you know even around a campfire you know something like a single person strumming your guitar it's like this is the coolest thing ever you know i don't know that's how i feel i don't know what you guys think i see a lot of head nod nodding everybody's oh, kind of in agreement robin i can't i can't see everybody so i can only see a few at a time <laughs> Well, it's, it sounds like what, what you guys are tapping into is like the power of the shared experience because you guys are like talking about festivals and uh, the giant hug, uh, I think Robin said, and like the energy um, that you sort of drew on. I know, I, I, I don't know, but I know for a fact Ryan has experienced that from a different point of view along with me when when you're on stage when it seems every single note you play is the right one every every song that you've chosen in your set list is the, the correct one the crowd is into it you're relaxed yet focused it's almost like what they call the alpha state and like amidst all that chaos you are like so chill like and so it's it's very similar experience just from a, a different perspective. Um, can is that something you can relate to, Ryan? Yeah, hundred percent. And and like I said, part of part of that is just the energy of everybody else. Uh, you know, just being almost in one with what you're doing at that at that time. So yeah, I totally get that. So. My next question is, how do we recreate that? Because we we can't go to a festival every day, you know. So when we have a, a stress day at work, or the kids, or, or you know, turning our world upside down at home, how do we create that calm? Recreate that calm feeling, especially in a quarantine self um, self quarantine situation that we're all facing. How do we recreate that? at home like isn't that one of the reasons why we're here today mm -hmm. yeah yep everybody uh take a minute 10 we'll write out it a little bit Glenn, do you want to play anything? Are you, are you playing some stuff in a little bit? I work as directed, <laughs> so um, I'm I'm happy to. I have all kind. I have stuff prepared. You know, whatever. It's all good. Okay. You let me know. All right. I'm gonna take a poll. Does everybody kind of have the, their answer written down, or, or kind of have an idea? Just give me a thumbs up or look up at the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're good there. All right. Who wants to share first? Robin, you're unmuted. Oh. You're still oh. unmuted, so I can call on well, you first. Um, basically, I just listen to it. If I feel, you know, I would listen to it. I mean, I've got a record player with records <laughs> that I love. Um, and, I, you know, I can Google anything I like. And you, luckily YouTube is pretty cool because then you can like, you know, watch the song over and over if you like went to a concert and, you know, like I was there. But um, basically listening to music 
Um, and the birds and music, birds are my music a lot of the time. So I'm a pretty chill person in general. <laughs> I don't I have, like I don't live. said the birds are your music. Yeah, I but, listen to the birds quite a bit. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, like in, even like in the winter time, not to go away from the music, but you know, when it's like cold and you're like, oh, is it ever going to be nice out or something? I really literally have a bird tape I'll put on in the house and it's like, oh, you know, it just sounds so alive, you know, it's great. But um, yeah, no, I came to Maine to get out of my stressful life. So I'm pretty comfortable right now. That's it. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Robin. I'm sharing. I'm going to unmute Carolyn and unmute yourself. <laughs> Good call. All right, Robin, I'm muting you. John, I already muted you. Carolyn, I'm going to unmute you. Now, okay. now we're good. <laughs> So I, I have a lot of thoughts and I might start rambling. So if I go way off here, just roll me back in. <laughs> um, how do we recreate this now? Um, I, I guess kind of, the, um, kind of the same way I always have when I'm not at a festival and bringing it home is just just how I listen to music, how music is a part of my everyday life. Um, when I'm working out, when I used to go to the gym, <laughs> always have the headphones on. Um, I'm like dancing on the treadmill, uh, you know, playing upbeat songs just to keep me going. Um, when I'm cooking, I have music on. If I'm not listening to a podcast, I'll have music on when I'm cooking. Usually like on a Friday night because I, um, uh, I do food prep so that I don't have to spend a lot of time cooking during the week. And so I'll just take a big chunk of time, usually on a Friday night or maybe Sunday afternoon, and do all that. And I have music going at the same time, and I'll drink some wine. And it's like my little quarantine party. <laughs> um, I can't, who said it? Robin, Robin was talking about um, the birds being music. I I didn't think of that before, but I smiled when she said that because I have, I, I took the time and put all of my CDs on um, my device a couple of years ago. And one of them was a CD from the Ohio Division of Wildlife and it's got bird songs on it. So every so often in between like an Iron Maiden song and a Bon Jovi song, a bird will come in. <laughs> and, um, somebody will say what kind of bird this is and um, you know a little fact about them so it that that is something that I can relate to having um, birds be part of your background music noise I like waking up with the window open and hearing the birds sing um, uh, one other thing that I wanted to do for so long and Glenn, you mentioned music and memories is taking um, like all the photos and video that I captured at these festivals and making them into like uh, a compilation, a, a video compilation and putting music behind that so that I can relive it whenever I feel like it. I, I kind of do that as a hobby, but it takes so long because it is only a hobby and I'm not an expert at it. So I don't take a lot of time to do it. but it's something that's been kind of on my project list um, of things to do. Um, and other than that, I like, I feel like I, I'm taking 2020 personally because I can't go to concerts. And, you know, it's such a big part of my life is going to shows with friends, going to see live music. And I don't know how that's going to be anymore. So, yeah, I, I feel. I feel a loss with it. I'm not sure how to answer that um, succinctly. You didn't ramble too much. <laughs> I 
looks like our group has gotten significantly bigger. bigger. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. I would just say welcome, Heather. I don't know, Glenn, you said you know who the 717 uh, phone it's, number there is? It's Mindy. Okay, so hi, Mindy. <laughs> I can't see you, but <laughs> hello. And then I know we got John coming in. Um, and you said you're two people. I see that you're two people. So you're going to have to tell me what that means. But <laughs> I see you and then I see SwitchFoo. So which audio am I listening to, John? I, put, I unmuted you. Oh, yeah, me. The, my phone is my webcam, so my microphone and camera up there, and I can type down here and watch everybody in bigger screens down here. I can actually see you all on my computer. <laughs> um, yeah, I take, I take it personally, too. Uh, I've already had seven shows canceled, and I have 12 more in the next eight weeks that will be canceled, plus a festival that we're not going to be able to play. Um, one of my best friends is the head engineer for the New Orleans Jazz Fest for the live recordings. Uh, he has a cast of like 12 people that work for him recording all the, all the stages that allow them to do so. Um, they, they make something like 116 records this week at a New Orleans Jazz Festival and they will be making zero dollars and recording zero songs. Um, so they all taken a pretty personal too. We can totally relate to that. John, you want to talk your mu So John is another musician as well, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I talk about what? Talk about being a musician and being. Well, we, we were getting different perspectives from, from different people and, um, and Glenn was kind of talking, I don't know, Glenn, you were talking about how like it's different from a musician perspective um, about the calm. He was talking about that, but. Well, I, I mean, like it's, it's certainly anti-calm because like I have, I, have, I have a song right here that I'm supposed to be in the studio for a month ago to record. Um, I have a project in Brooklyn that because they can't go on tour they're writing a whole bunch of additional songs for the project that i probably won't be on and it's a tour that's being postponed that i was going to go perform in um you know there's three or four other recording opportunities i was going to be a part of that are all postponed indefinitely you know it's the chance of having your career go where you want it to go if you're not already on the other side of that line right now, there's no way across. So you missed Glenn's question. <laughs> and yes. Glenn. So, so we were talking about <clears throat> how uh, people have thought of a time when they were really chill and really calm and how music played a part in that. And then a lot, a lot of it re revolved around the live music experience, be it a festival or or even uh, you know being in the pocket on stage amidst all the chaos, everything uh, becomes peaceful. And then we uh, the the follow up question was, how do you recreate that at home? You can't go to a festival right now. You can't play live right now. So how do we recreate that uh, that stuff at home? And one of the things that uh, uh, was mentioned uh, that that I took notes on earlier in the day was. Uh, a lot of a lot of the good feelings through music are, are drawn through good memories. Um, so for right now, like music sounds like for you, John, music is kind of stressful for you because of the thing, the loss that is involved, you know. Um, so how, wh what are you doing to sort of turn that around to to find, if you are <laughs> maybe you're just maybe you're just doing <laughs> but oh no, no, no disaster it's a total disaster right now that's why i decided to come in and hang out with you guys and see what's going on <laughs> all right copy that 
So, so yeah, so, you know, we can't, we can't always get to festivals. Ryan and I and John have no gigs for the foreseeable future. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so how do we recreate that? Um, you know, I've, I've been, I've been recording stuff and posting it on, on Facebook. Um, what it does for me is it, is it, it allows me to be creative, but it allows me to listen to myself and critique myself. Um, I have a friend who's an uh, off-Broadway actor up in New York, uh, Tony, uh, that I used to sing with. And I listen to my recordings and I'm real critical. Um, and then I ask Tony, how do I get better at this? So I'm sort of using it as a uh, way to try to improve my actual performance be because it, it, it's hard to get uh, good professional feedback from live shows because the other live musicians aren't coming to your shows. They're working, you know? So uh, that's how I'm using it. Um, it. It allows me to be creative and also figure out a way to, I'm kind of out of practice. So it helps me sort of get back uh, in game shape. But uh, so that, but not everybody's able to do that. Um, but that, that's what I'm doing as a non-working live musician right now. That seems to be helping. Who else wants to kind of share? Does anybody else have wanted to share some feedback as far as what they uh, were thinking on the question? Glenn had. Stephanie? Yeah, I can go ahead and share. Um, it's actually pretty cool, but a lot of EDM artists are participating in like virtual online festivals. Um, so it's over three days, either on YouTube or some other streaming website, and they'll do like an hour or half hour set. So that's kind of been what I've been doing the past month is just like popping in and out online here. And then a couple times I've set up Zoom calls with my friends. So we're all watching the music festival happening as we're like kind of hanging out together. Um, so that's kind of a cool thing that I'm, I've been doing this month. Cool. Hey, Mindy, I can't, I, I can't see your virtual thumbs up. So you're going to have to text me if you have something you want to add to the group. So somebody upstairs in my house is watching this. So, um, all right. Awesome sauce. All right. Um, I feel like Ryan might want to comment and hear anything. I'm going to unmute you. There you go. Uh, unfortunately for John, I'm, I'm kind of in the opposite situation. I played music full time for 20 years. And then three years ago, I got a real job and really cut back on the music. Now I'm working from home. Um, because of the pandemic and I have a lot of free time so I've actually been able to dig back into my music so it's it's been good for me I have lost some paying gigs so that's been it's not my main income so it's not that painful but that hurts a little bit but it's been really good to um, I've been doing a lot of recording at home and stuff but it, otherwise I travel in sales and just don't have the time um, I have incorporated music in this six weeks. I've kind of, I'm at home with my son who's doing class work like this. And um, I've kind of, I've talked to Deb about this a lot. I've incorporated, uh, I've, I've kind of looked inward and, and have been doing some wellness things. I've been eating better, not drinking. I've lost like 25 pounds in the last seven weeks. Music is a big part of that. I um. I meditate, which is something I had on and off started experimenting with when I got into sales because I just have in the evenings I'm in a motel or a hotel by myself alone. And at bedtime, I always fall asleep to the same piano music because it relaxes me. And then I do a morning stretch yoga routine that I always listen to relaxing music for. And those are definitely three times I use music every day for calm. And I have specific things I like to listen to because they relax me. So, 
there's my two cents. Cool. Thanks for uh, sharing. So we got like 20 minutes. Glenn, it's up to you. Do you wanna, did you have any other, you said you had some stuff written down we wanted to, to dig into that or we wanna jam some music, what do you feel like? Uh, it's, it's your call. It's, uh... no, I mean, it's it's up to you. It's it's up to you. Um, hey, Heather's on the call. Heather, are you are you uh, coming on camera? I don't know if you're if you want to type in the chat. If you're not able to come on camera, if you had any, or if you want to um, unmute yourself, you can certainly do that. If you wanted to chat, um, I know John said he just got attacked by a toddler, so <laughs> I think he's kind of busy at the moment. Um, so I don't know. I feel like. Just Go does ahead. anybody ha does anybody have any questions? That's a good question to ask. Um, I want to know about your your routines. Like Ryan was talking a lot about routines and how specifically um, he uses and incorporates music. So you had said a little bit about some um, some ways that you've done it. I wanted to like dig into that a little bit more if we can. Who are you talking to specifically? When? Oh, well, you know, to me, music is organized noise, you know? Um, and I listen to the same thing at the end of the day also. It's not music though, it's a podcast, but it's that voice. It's the same voice every night, no matter what. I went to bed, I stayed up and played video games till like 2.30 in the morning last night and still put that podcast on because it's like a guarantee that that voice is going to put me to, to sleep. Um, I hope that doesn't make the host of the podcast feel bad, but I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I don't know if it's the tone of voice or, or what, but it, the, the, organized, the organized noise aspect of music, see when I, I'm getting upset or I'm stressed, I, I, I need to get all the they say it's okay to have butterflies. You need to get them all flying in the same direction, right? So um, there, there are certain things that I do depending on on what kind of feeling that I have. So this is some of the stuff I wrote down, like frustration and, and anger, like that'll that'll call for an energy release of some sort. So what I'll do is I'll I'll grab my electric guitar. Uh, grab YouTube, throw on some blues backing tracks or rock backing tracks, and then I'll, I'll play some faster, harder stuff to just get some energy out, you know? Or if I'm feeling the other way, then it's like sad or depressed or whatever. Um, then I'll listen to real lyric heavy stuff that I connect with that sort of helps with that. And like for me, people who have an overflow of feelings, they're sort of, they're edgy, you call them edgy, right? So like the energy release or listening to, if you're sad, listening to more sad music, it like pushes me over the edge to where I, it sort of releases all that stuff. You know, that's, that's sort of how I visualize it. It's sort of like a, a, a dam, you know, we're stopping whatever that, that feeling is, it's that sort of, binding us up and then something you do something and the dam is you know knocked down and then all that that stuff just comes out somehow and then you're back to it's like you know popping an emotional pimple you know you're back to being comfortable again but so those are those are two things that that I, that I do and they involve being able to actually play the music itself you know, which is a big part of the energy release, you know, I'll come home from work and I'll say to Mindy, I, I need 15 minutes, just 15 minutes. And, you know, she, she knows me well enough to know that if she wants me for the next three hours, it's worth that 15 minutes to, you know, make that happen. And I'll just go downstairs and I'll just put on some like BB King or something and I'll just play along with it and just, you know, feel it feels better you know so i can demonstrate that yeah that's what i was about to say is that, can, is that can you make that happen? yeah so <laughs> if 
what I do is I have this little PA system here. It has Bluetooth, right? And so I'll just hook my phone. I'll just hook my phone up to Bluetooth and then I'll just, so this is uh, called Heartbroken Blues Backing Track, right? So let me see. Why isn't it playing? It was playing earlier. Am I still connected on Bluetooth? No, my Bluetooth lit away. Yeah, I'm good. There we go. John asked you what key it is in. G minor. Why is it playing? Okay. For one yeah. moment while you're figuring that out, I'm gonna, yeah. Heather's <laughs> over here and I wanted to say hi and I wanna unmute you and you can say hi. Hi. How are you? Good, I had a really late start today. <laughs> oh, no worries, love. <laughs> I forget, where are you again? Uh, Portsmouth, Ohio. Portsmouth, Ohio, okay, yeah. awesome. Uh, how's it over there in Ohio? Oh, it's a beautiful day and I'm inside. It's like 78 and sunny. Lovely. Yeah, I got in. After this, I'm gonna have to enjoy it while I can before the happy hour call. <laughs> I know, right? We got yeah. Saturday sippies. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. I didn't know from our conversation if you felt like um, there was anything that resonated with you that you wanted to share. Um, well, the uh, the whole like listening to music uh, before going to sleep, like that was that was really big for me. When like when I was in the Navy, you know, I slept in the same room as like forty seven other people, you know, and the only thing that separated us was a curtain. So you know that that music was that that cue for me, like you know, put the headphones in and it's just it's time to relax and it's time to sleep and just so that was super helpful. And then. Um, I also love listening to um, like instrumentals whenever I'm trying to study. Cause like, uh, the, since it doesn't have words, it doesn't distract me, but for whatever reason, it kind of motivates me to do a little bit more work. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, well, thanks for sharing. Uh, Glenn, or how are you doing over there? Yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, go for it. So, like I said, this is what I do. I just put a little back backing track on. John, are, are you going to play too, John? John told me not to unmute him, so I don't know. He said that. stuff like that you know and it doesn't matter if you like play it perfect or whatever but it's just like a good energy release you know to, to play along unmute john i was really in a groove there man Wait, i think we were all kind of like getting in a groove what'd you say unmute john john are you no Thank you. 
Sort of we're gonna give everybody, <laughs> everybody give Glenn clap it. Like, <laughs> it's so it's so it's so YouTube is so great. They have all these backing tracks. So you gotta pick uh let, let's do uh let's do let's type in funky jazz backing track. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Um oh here we go. So we gotta listen to a, an advertisement. <laughs> so this is Funky Jazz backing track. Funky Jazz. Can you guys hear that? No. Your sound was going in and out a little bit when you were playing, but we could still hear it. Right guys, thumbs up. Can yeah. you hear that? It's very, very a little bit we can tiny bit hear it there you go Did everybody hear that thumbs up right, I'm dancing guys This is now a dance party. I dance by myself. So, all right, it just gives you a chance just to. Sometimes I'm like tired after playing with this stuff. So, I want to hear John. What is John playing? What what was he doing down there? I'm not actually playing anything. Oh, well, you were faking it well. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was, that's just, that song, that music is too, uh, for harmonica, it's, harmonica kind of takes that down, calm feeling of that kind of tune and adds a little too much tension to it that's not a song that needs tension harmonica is a good tension thing so like in a song we, we do a couple songs like that and i don't really play harmonica on them because we don't we're trying to not add that layer to it which is also why um like i can't go do these solo festival things because unlike you and ryan i can't play that or the you know thing with strings that looks like that but different um i have i have you know 20 keys and that's it so cool yeah carolyn just said that she needs to find a backing track for her hand drums she i, I got a chat from her but that's very cool you should um, ask ask around at um people who sell pot <laughs> okay <laughs> That's hilarious, gotta say. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up, guys. We're already at like three o'clock, just about. Um, Glenn, did you have any final things that you wanted to um, mention? I do wanna ask a question before, before we end about an action item that everybody can kind of um, take. Like, what did you guys learn? And maybe you guys could just share, and then I'll have Glenn wrap us up. Like, what are, 
what are you guys like, is there anything you took away from this? Does anybody wanna, does anybody wanna share? Go ahead, Ryan. I'm jealous of Glenn's back, black background. How do, what's going on over there, Glenn? Uh, it's a sheet from Walmart. Oh, nice. Okay. That I hung oh. and then I, then I put my BB King poster up and my Tony Perry three picture up. So it's a work in progress though. Right. Looking good. Hey, thanks bro. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else that you might take away from this, Ryan? No, I, I appreciate you putting this together. This was, I didn't know what to expect coming in because I haven't really, I do a lot of Zoom calls and stuff for work, but I haven't participated in a group like this. So thank you for putting this together. You're welcome. I'm excited. I yeah. think this is yeah. fun. It's just super fun for me to do that. And all are my- you gonna keep, Are you gonna keep this time every week or yeah what's at, this, that? at this point i think we're going to try to do uh the calls every saturday at two o'clock eastern time um except for freddie when freddie has his he's in australia so i don't know that that would make sense for him <laughs> it's a little a little bit of a time difference there but um and some people we might have a guy from italy that's going to be on and, and so if we have european times then that might be different but for for the most part for the next um for you guys um I, most of you guys are from LI and most of you have talked to a bunch about this community, but to give an overall sum up, uh, basically we're going to be launching the Find Calm Here community in June. We're going to be promoting it at the end of May. And what that means is that we're going to have live events every Saturday. They're going to be free. So you can, all, you can join the Zoom link for free. It's all virtual events for free. They're going to be different topics every week. So like last week we had essential oils. This week we have music. Next week we have my friend Adrienne. She's going to talk about minimalism and finding calm with minimalism. <laughs> I know a couple of people are excited about that one. And um, we're just going to keep having these conversations. I don't have a lot booked yet. Um, we're going to, I'm hopefully, I'm having a meeting with all of my partners tonight, actually, in, in about two hours, so I'm, or in about an hour, actually. And so I'm really excited to, um, to get them on the schedule so that once we have that in the schedule, then um, we're going to put that out on Facebook. It's going to be on the website, on the findcalmhere.com website. And then the community is going to have the recorded uh, event. So once you guys um, join the community, you'd be able to have access to the full recording. So if you missed one, you'd be able to see that um, in the community. So that's something we're, we're all working on right now. I'm getting together um, all that stuff. But for right now, um, Saturdays at two o'clock is what um, I'm planning on doing. So that way it's kind of the same time everybody knows, hey, Saturday's the day for Find Calm here. And, um, you know, that way we have some really great consistency there. I think everybody's nodding their heads. So I guess that's a good idea. I came up with that <laughs> like over the week. Um, cool. Uh, let's see. What else were we talking about? Anybody else want to share anything, their takeaways from today? I feel like Stephanie has something to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> All right, uh, Carolyn, anything? Any last words? Okay. Yeah. Um, I just reiterating the fact that I need to pick up my drum more. I've got a slight hole in it that I've never gotten fixed, but it still makes noise. So <laughs> um, now that it's getting nicer out, I'd like to take it out in the back and beat on it some. And, you know, maybe get better at it <laughs> so that if I'm just playing by myself um, and other people hear it rather than being around a campfire where everybody else's beats are drowning my um, very not so good playing out then um, yeah I'd like to get better at it and uh, I am going to go on YouTube and, and find see if I can find some backing tracks to help me do that. Beat that drum. Beat it. Awesome. Very cool. Um, Robin, you had your hand up. Um, yeah, actually, I just want to say it's act just talking about music has brought back all like you don't realize how much music we've all listened to. And I'm thinking of all the, you know, 
different music types that I listened to and, you know, what was happening in my life at the time. I don't know, it just brought back a whole lot of big swell of like, oh, music is like a huge part of my life and probably a lot of people's lives. And, you know, just learning about different ways. I didn't know about the backtrack thing at um, YouTube. Um, but I do play along. I have spoons, so I'll play along to music at home wait, by myself. Wait, pause. You play with spoons? What is this I about? Play the, the, I play the spoons. Like a rhythm, you know, like I have a rhythm bag. Like I can do shaker eggs or... Okay, you're you know. breaking that out. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but during the Camp Indie virtual event, there is going to be a talent show. Oh, I'm not talented. <laughs> and we should just, you're getting called out on that talent show for that. <laughs> I'll bring my music back, but that's all I can do is like rhythm. I have spoons and like, you know, the, I don't even know what it's called, the stick with the ribs, like the alligator thing, you know? Yeah. And so like I play along rhythm, but you know, it's, I don't have a band or anything, but I do that with music. And then I've had friends who, they would sit around, you know, watching TV, probably smoking too much pot, and they would all play their, music, their guitar. They try to play along with commercials, <laughs> which was so funny. This was long before YouTube, so they all try to like play. That's how they practice is they play along with a commercial. <laughs> really uh, funny. Very cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that Carolyn put in their music is life. That is an amazing it statement. Is. Yeah, it is. It is. Amazing yeah. statement. I don't, Stephanie, were you going to say something? I feel like I saw you unmute now. She's like, you, you oh, keep something. trying to call on Stephanie. Stephanie's, Stephanie's just chilling, man. She's chilling. She's calm. Calm as a cucumber. All right. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think that's all we're going to um, chat about today. I told you guys about the uh, minimalism event next Saturday. Um, we're going to get some more announcements happening um, in the fine calm here community um, for the month of May. Um, we're going to have, after minimalism, we're having mindfulness. Uh, I think that's March 16th. Those are the those are the two next events I have scheduled so far. Uh, Glenn, what you got for us? Any any final thoughts, words, comments, statements? No, may, uh, you know, just for the next week, just be, you know, aware of the opportunities to, uh, you know, use music to de-stress. You know, right. The first couple of weeks is about you know, just awareness and, and just talking about ideas. So um, I was happy to spend some time with you guys this afternoon. It was great meeting you. Hopefully we can uh, hang out some more. Yeah, I love that. Um, just how music can help you. We talked a little bit earlier about how music can help you be present and mindful and that brings calm for sure. Uh, and grounding and things like that. And the memories that you have, I mean, I, I didn't share mine, but um, dancing, like music with dancing, um, for some reason that keeps coming up for me as a, a memory where I felt just so um, calm and like I can remember a specific time when I was dancing that I just felt so happy and it was just and that brought on this calming feeling because i just was i was listening to live music it was an italian lake in harrisburg i love oh i'm so sad we can't listen to music but uh i love that they have these um amazing bands john's played there um i don't know if ryan's ever played there i don't think ryan must have dropped off or something i don't see him but anyway um so like yeah like just remembering the summer day and I had this cute dress on and I'm like dancing around um, at Italian Lake and listening to some amazing music just, and then like sitting in my chair and like sipping on some wine and just having an amazing time. That's, that's what I thought of when the first question was asked about um, a time when we thought felt calm with music. So uh, thanks for everybody for being here. Is anybody else, John, uh, Heather, I don't know, anybody else want to chat, say anything, final words? No. He's just, he's waving and saying goodbye. Heather, thank you for being here. Thanks everybody for being here. I love, I love all the support, obviously, and uh, it's much appreciated. I think we're going to sign out. You want to uh, sign us out, Glenn, with a, with a tune? You got one more tune? 
I can play. All right. All right. As Glenn plays, we're gonna hang out here if you have to go. Uh, cool. You can wave by as you're on your way out whenever you decide to peace out, okay? There ain't a lot that you can do in this town. to the lake and then you turn back around go to school and learn to read and write so you can walk down to the county bank and sign away your life Keep forgetting I'm muted. Woo! I was yelling. Woo! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, say I was gonna say unmute yourselves and say thanks and say bye. Bye. Enjoy you. the rest of your weekend. Thank you all for coming. Have a great day.